Hi, this is Wei Li. I am Associate Professor of Urban Planning from Texas A&M University. I am recording this video to help my student in 610, Structure and Function of Cities. This video includes instructions about how to create a fishnet in ArcGIS and export it to Google Earth Pro. I will introduce operations for two examples. The first example is to create a fishnet over a city boundary shapefile that is on a projected coordinate system. And the second example is about creating fishnet on a city boundary shapefile which is not a projected coordinate system. Several students do not have much GIS background in the past. That's not a problem. This video will include very straightforward step-by-step -step operations for them to follow. Now let's go to the first example. We will import a shapefile of city boundary of College Station, Texas in ArcGIS. Now let's open ArcMap. You search ArcMap, then let's click ArcMap version 10. Once that is open, it will pop up a window asking you to select a map file. So you can click cancel and click this plus sign. It is an icon to add data. Click this icon. It will jump to a folder where our files are stored. If you click this menu, you will realize that there are several directories to follow here. Our files are stored under this folder, C-Plan610. If your file is installed in another folder, you can click this one, connect to folder, and go to the folder where your files are, in, are stored. So we go to our C-Plan610, there are two shape files here. Both of them are about the boundary files for the city of College Station, Texas. Both files are projected. Let's first open the first one. This one, city of College Station, projected, state plan. Let's edit. Now we have this boundary of College Station, Texas. To check the coordinate system, we click, we right click this file and we pick properties. Under the source tab, we can find the information about the projected coordinate system. This one is a state plan system. What is important is to know the unit that the system uses to measure distance. In this case, it is the foot, that is the unit of our distance measurement. As you can see, once the mouse is moving around, there, in this area, we have two numbers. These are x and y coordinate measured in feet. So we have this file imported into ArcGIS. Now the next step to do is to create a fishnet over this city boundary. What we do is to click this menu, Geoprocessing. Click here, and then we click Search for Tools. Under here, we search the tool for creating fishnet. Let's type fishnet and search. The tool is right here. Create fishnet. Click this one. We have the window for creating fishnet. 
the first box asks about where do we want to store our fish knife shapefile. We click here and it will go to the same folder. Let's put it into the same folder. Um, let's name it city of CS projected fishnet. Let's call it 111. Click save. Next, we will need to define the extent of the fishnet. To make our job easier, you can click this drop down menu and let's select the city of college station boundary file. Once you select this ship file, the top, bottom, left, and right points are already determined. What is very important is to define how big each grid will be. So we will need to tell the software the widths and heights of the each cell. In our case, we want to create one mile by one mile fishnet. So one mile is equivalent to 5,280 feet. So we put a number 5280 as the width of the cell. And we also put the same number to define the height. Once that is done, we click OK. Now this software is generating a fishnet over the city of College Station. Now automatically, the fishnet has been generated. There is also a lovely dot in the middle of each cell, and that is the label file. We can uncheck that, we don't need that one. What we need is this fishnet shapefile. The next step to do is to convert this shapefile into a file that can be read by Google Earth Pro. The file which is used by Google Earth Pro is called a KML file. KML file. So we'll need to go to geoprocessing Dropbox again and we search for tools. Here, let's search KML and click search. We're going to pick the tool called Layer to KML Conversion Tool. We click this one. First box is about which layer to convert to KML. When we click here, there are several layers here. What we're going to do is to choose fishnet layer. That is the file to be converted to KML. We click this one. The next one is uh, the output file. It automatically pointed to a directory, but we want to put it into the same folder. So we click this one and it goes to the C Plan 610. So let's give it a name. So this is the KML file. So we call it city of college station projected fishnet 111 KML. Click save. Click OK. Now we know the operation has been completed and we have created a KML file into that folder. The next step is to run the Google Earth Pro application. So we search Google Earth Pro. We have this software installed on my computer. If you don't have it, you can download it. It's free. We click Google Earth Pro. We go to File, Import, under C Drive Plan 610, there is nothing. 
because we will need to select all files right here then a bunch of files will appear in this window we're going to remember we're going to import the KML file and that file is this one city of CS projected fishnet 111 KML once we click open Google Earth will fly to the city of college station and then we can see our fishnet covering the city of college station the fishnet is too skinny let's make it thicker we click style color under the width we call we name it five now we have a fishnet which is pretty visible here in order to confirm that it is one mile by one mile fishnet we click show ruler now the ruler is showing here now let's measure it and it is one mile from west to east and now also let's measure from north to south yep it is also one mile from north to south so this operation is a success we have just finished an example of creating a fishnet over a city boundary shapefile which is on a projected coordinate system, state plane system. Remember that we have another file which is also a city of college station boundary shapefile which is also a projected coordinate system but it's a different projection system. That system is the UTM system. So we are going to demonstrate that one as well it is still under the example number one so let's open arc map again we click cancel and let's import that file remember we just finished this example now this one this time we're gonna finish the same process but under a different boundary shape file so this is also a state uh, of Texas in the city of College Station let's edit so it looks exactly the same we right click this file and we click properties and we know that this is a projection system of UTM and it uses meter as a unit to measure distance same process we click geoprocessing search for tools under here we click uh, we input fishnet click create fishnet let's put it into the same folder and we call this fishnet city of CS projected fishnet let's call it 222 click Save and let's use the existing extent we select the existing layer of the boundary it gives us a definition of the extent of the fishnet now remember that it is critical to define the cell size width and height and the numbers we put here should be consistent with the existing projection system remember it is a UTM system for this file and it uses meter to measure distance we want to create a cell which is one mile by one mile so one mile is equivalent to 1609 meters so let's put 1609 meters here as the width and also 1609 as the height let's click OK
Okay, now we have created this fishnet. Remember that the next step is to export this fishnet to a KML file. So go to geoprocessing, search for tools, and KML. Click search, layer to KML. The layer we want to choose is fishnet222. And the output file, let's put into the same folder. Let's call it city of CS projected fishnet 222 KML. Click save and click OK. So now we know that the operation is complete. Let's run Google Earth Pro. Let's import the file that we have just created. Click all files. And this is the KML file we have just created. Click open. Again, we are flying to the city of College Station. Now we have this fishnet, which is not very visible. So let's click properties to style and color we pick the width of number five and click OK now let's test whether these fishnet are one mile by one mile we click ruler we have this ruler tool and let's see uh, yes from west to east this is one mile let's see from north to south from north to south it is also one mile. So this operation is also a success. Now let's move on and introduce another example. And this time we're going to bring in a GIS shapefile, which is not a projected coordinate system. Many of you get your city boundary shapefiles from the census website. Remember that it's called a census tiger file. Now, let me close ArcGIS and Google Earth. We're going to start from scratch. We're going to visit the census website, download the shape file, file, and then we put it into ArcGIS. So let's close our Google Earth file, and let's also close our ArcGIS file. Let's do not save this map file. Now we are going to census website we search tiger census it will bring us to this page and we are going to select tiger line shapefile new 2017 shapefiles we click here it is very complicated but we go to the tab of download Click download, there are two options, web interface and FTP. But let's click web interface, it is more friendly. We pick the year of 2018, that is the latest year, and the layer type for us is the city boundary. Here, the city slash place, we click places, we click submit. Now we are going to select the state, let's select Texas and we click download let's download it into the same folder that we have been using plan 16 remember this is the file the zip file we click save and we have completed the download we go to show in folder this is our zip file let's uh, extract those files here Okay, we have several files which are city boundaries for the city of Col city of all cities in the state of Texas. Now let's open Arc Map. Let's open Arc Map.
click cancel. Now let's bring in the file that we have just downloaded. We click add data. Under this folder, there are several shape files. Remember this one, this is the shape file we have just downloaded. It is a shape file that includes all places, all city boundaries for within the city, within the Texas state. So we click add. And it, as you can see, it shows all the city boundaries for the state of Texas. We're going to select the city of College Station. We have two different ways of selecting that city. First, we can do select feature. We click this icon and we know College Station is located here. So let's click here and this place is highlighted. And then we can right click this file and use data and export data. We'll keep everything as default, but we change the shapefile name into City of College Station. Okay, not projected. Click OK. Now let's add this layer to this map. Okay, now we have the new, we have this uh, new shape file um, for the city boundary of College Station. But we have so many city boundaries right here, and we also have a highlighted one. What we do is to uncheck the state of Texas one. Now we have this one only, a lonely city of College Station. So what you can do is if you want to take a look at it, you can click zoom in and you can zoom in and you can further zoom in, doesn't matter. And now you see the city of College Station. What is different between this one and the previous city boundary file is that this file is not projected. Let's right click this file and click properties. Under this source tab, we see that this file has a geographic coordinate system, which is North America 1983, but it does not have a projected system, which means right now it is not projected. And this file, we don't have a measurement of distances. It uses the let long degrees. As you move around, let's click cancel. Let's, if you move around city of color station boundaries and you see right here, there are uh, decimal degrees. So those numbers show the longitudinal degree and latitude degree for the point where you are, your mouse is located. The degree refers to a degree in either latitude or longitude. Let me briefly introduce these concepts. A degree in latitude refers to your location on the surface of the Earth, depending on where you are, how far you are from the equator. You are at a zero degree if you are located on equator. You are at a 90 degrees if you are located in the North Pole or South Pole. Because the Earth is nearly a perfect, um, you know, sphere, it's nearly perfect. It is not perfect because equator it, here, the diameter is slightly bigger if you, um, you know, measure the diameter from uh, North Pole to the South Pole. But that difference is uh, nearly negligible consider how big the earth is that difference is only 27 miles so you can imagine the earth to be a perfect sphere so therefore one degree in latitude no matter where you are on earth one degree in latitude is pretty much the same it's 69 miles um, 69 miles so more precisely 69.17 miles the longitudinal degree refers to 
your location from west to east. It is a value that ranges from 0 to 180, depending on your location with reference to the Greenwich station in UK. So now the question is, if we divide the Earth right into 360 degrees by slicing it, then one degree change in longitude is equivalent to different distances. If you are located at the equator, one degree change in longitude is equivalent to 69.172 miles. But if you are located in the pole, North Pole or South Pole, if you are located there, then one degree change in the longitude is basically nothing. It's zero uh, mile distance. So the question is, how can we calculate the distance for one degree change in longitude? Previously, right, we, s we knew that one degree change in latitude is 69.172 miles, no matter where you are on Earth. And then one degree change in longitude it depends on your latitude, and this is the equation to calculate the value of one degree change in longitude converted into miles. And there is a component of cosine, it's a cosine of a latitude. Here, this is the link which you can follow to calculate the cosine values, or you can refer to your high school notes to do that. For example, college station's latitude is 30.6280 degrees, then one degree change in longitude in college station is this much. Cosine this latitude value times 69.172 miles, and that is 59.52 miles. Okay, now we know, therefore, one mile north to south in college station is equivalent to 1 over 69.172 and this much of a degree in latitude. 1 mile west to east in college station is equivalent to this amount of degree change in longitude. Later we will need to input these values into the cell width and height when we create the fishnet in ArcGIS. To create a fishnet over this new city of College Station boundary file, which is not projected, we follow the same process, geoprocessing, search for tools, fishnet, click search, create fishnet. So it's the same interface as before, and this one we name the folder and the file name for the new fishnet ship file. Let, let's follow the same pattern. Let's uh, call it 333. All right? It's a little childish, but let's use this one. Save and we use the existing city of college station boundary to define our fishnet extent and do not pick this one. This is for the whole state of Texas. Uh, and this one is for the city of College Station. We have a top, bottom, left, and right. Those numbers are in decimal point degrees for the latitude and the longitude. What is critical is the cell size, width, and height. For the width, we are talking about from west to east, and that is um, the distance, right, that is distance depending on the longitude. We're going to input this value, longitude. This amount of degree is equivalent to one mile from west to east in College Station. Let's put it here. Copy and paste. In terms of the height of the cell size, we're talking about the distance from north to south in one mile in College Station. So 
that is equivalent to this amount of degree in latitude we copy that and we paste it so we have uh, the width and height definition we should be all set we click OK and the computer is now creating the fishnet for us okay now we have this fishnet file remember the next step is to convert this fishnet file into a KML file and let's uncheck this label and uh, we go to geoprocessing search for tools it is KML search layer to KML the layer is the projected fishnet 333 click this one the output file let's put it into the same folder let's follow the same naming pattern we call the new uh, fishnet 333 in KML click save the output file is defined everything is all set let's click OK now we know that layer to KML operation has been completed. Now let's open Google Earth Pro. Let's bring in the new KML file that we have just created. File, import, click all files. Now this 333 guy is the new KML file that we have just created for College Station. Let's click open. Now we are flying to the city of College Station. Again, let's right click this file, properties, style, and color. Let's make it number five in terms of width. Now let's measure if our fishnet is a success. Let's measure the distance from north to south. North to south is one mile. Now let's measure from east to west. It is also one mile. So this operation is also a success. By far, we have introduced both examples. One with shapefile on the projected coordinate system and one with uh, the boundary shape file not on a projected coordinate system the key difference is that for the not pro for the non-projected coordinate system you will need to um, figure out the amount of degree which is equivalent to one mile north to south and uh, west to east so remember that this um, equation um, which you can use to do the conversion um, for the longitude longitude degree for the latitude is always a 69.172 miles for one degree you know for this class because we don't have uh, a prerequisite uh, for GIS for this course so um, you know I hope that you won't feel intimidated about using GIS for this assignment if you have further questions uh, regarding this operation, please feel free to stop by my office hours or uh, send me an email. I'll be very pleased to help you and I want to make sure that you feel comfortable about this operation and I believe that you can finish the high quality assignment. Thank you very much.